Doctor Who Flux, Chapter 4, Village of the Angels. What an episode. The Weeping Angels were genuinely terrifying. In essence, it kind of felt a bit like a spiritual successor slash sequel to Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone with the whole image of an angel becomes itself an angel and angels being inside people's minds. But unlike Time of Angels, Flesh and Stone, Chibnall had the common sense to not show the angels moving. Oh, and he also had the common sense to not have people pretending they can see. Just needed to get that out my system. I'm still not over walk like you can see, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Village of the Angels. So let's start by talking about characters. Let's talk about Claire first this week. Claire was a character who showed up in episode one, got zapped back in time by a weeping angel, and ended up here. She met up with the Doctor again, and she was a great character, a standout one in this episode. She almost felt personality-wise a bit like Sally Sparrow, which is a great thing you want to invoke if you're doing weeping angels. But yeah, she was great. I thought her interactions with the Doctor were really cool, and the plot line with the angel being inside her mind, slowly taking control, that all worked really well, and Annabelle Shirley performed it amazingly. Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor, again, was phenomenal. Again, like she has been for the entirety of Flux, she worked really well with the Weeping Angels, and it was really great to see her interacting with all the characters in this story. I thought her interactions with people such as Professor Jericho were phenomenal, and her interactions with Claire were great as well. Also, her standout moment was definitely the cliffhanger, which I will get onto in a minute. Yaz and Dan, they were, yeah, they, they were fine. I mean, Dan is just consistently great. Yaz was just kind of there this episode, although she did do quite a lot of policing stuff. And I mean, she's had quite a lot of development in this series, so I can cope with them not having that big of a role in this episode. And seeing as it looks like Survivors as the Flux might not even have the Doctor in at all, and might just be a companion-focused episode, then I think them not having such a big role here is fine. Other characters, Belle. Belle here, once again, Thaddea Graham is phenomenal. Belle is definitely my favourite new character in this series. Although this does bring me on to the one complaint I have with this episode. All the stuff in 1967 was great. I absolutely loved it. The angels terrifying, I'll get onto them in a minute. All the stuff with Belle, whilst I did enjoy it, Thaddea Graham is phenomenal as Belle. Belle is, like I said, my favourite character this series. It did just kind of feel a bit unnecessary to keep cutting back to her stuff, which I think is a real shame to say because I did really enjoy it. It did just kind of take me out of the angels stuff. I think this is the episode that the Ravagers have had the least impact in. Obviously, Azir did appear, but it was only briefly to take people into Passenger, and then she sort of went away again. I felt like it was necessary to have these moments to make it more connected to the overall story, but they did feel like they could have been cut out and we still would have had a full, complete story. With something like War of the Sontarans, if you took out all the stuff at the Temple of Atropos with Swarm and Azir, then the story wouldn't have worked as well and wouldn't have felt as complete. But all the stuff with Azir and Passenger and Bell here, if it hadn't have been there, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. So that is my tiny complaint, and I hate to make it because Bell is just consistently phenomenal. But yeah, that is the one issue I had with this episode. Anyway, let's get back to the good stuff. The Weeping Angels. Absolutely terrifying. They were just really scary here. I think there's stuff they did here which in things like Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone I didn't think worked as well, such as the angels speaking. I was never a big fan of that, but I feel like here it just it made them creepier. Maybe that was just down to Kevin McNally's performance briefly as the angel talking through the TV screen, because I never found Angel Bob's voice to be that threatening, but here the angel was creepy just taunting Professor Jericho. I also liked seeing the rogue angel talking through the guise of Claire. I think it's quite a twisted concept to have an angel talking through the mind of a human. And I think it works better here than it did with Angel Bob back in Series 5, because here it felt a lot more threatening. Back in Series 5, Bob was dead, the angel was just using its voice, but these are live characters. And I think it's really interesting to see, especially with Professor Jericho, the angels using a person's own voice against them. I absolutely loved that bit. And also the image of an angel becoming itself an angel was something that worked well enough in series 5 but they played it up to its full potential here. Angels coming through drawings, being set on fire, that was a great visual. Angels coming through TV screens, it was all great stuff. And obviously you have the classic people blinking, angels being terrifying. That chase scene when they were escaping the basement 
was great. It was the classic Angels at their best. And it was great seeing some slight new additions to the Angels, such as if they send you back in time twice, then you just die. They can't do it a second time. And people are saying on the internet, oh, what about Rory and the Angels take Manhattan? Whilst he was got by the Angel multiple times, the first time was the only time I actually sent him back in time. All the other times, I think it was only one more time, it ju they just sent him through space to Winter Key, so it's not really that much of an issue. But I think it's great, such as things also, the angel choosing not to attack because there's a fate worse waiting for the doctor. That's really creepy, and I love that as well. These small additions to the angel's lore feel like they are natural, unlike, say, image of an angel becomes itself an angel or angel speaking. Things that I do like, but they do just feel a bit too gimmicky. Of course, a gimmick that doesn't work for the angels is if you see them moving, or characters pretending they can see. As the Tenth Doctor clearly states in Blink, it's not a choice, it's a fact of their biology. In the sight of every other living creature, they simply turn to stone. Okay, I'll stop mentioning this now. It's just, it's a Weeping Angels episode. I'm gonna have to talk about Flesh and Stone at some point. Anyway, other stuff. Twist with Peggy, pretty cool, pretty inconsequential to the plot, but I mean, it worked, so I'm not complaining too much. Let's talk about the cliffhanger. What an amazing cliffhanger. Easily my favourite one for Flux so far. The Doctor is literally a Weeping Angel now. She's just, she turned into a weeping angel. Also, angels work for the division. How powerful are they that they can bend the weeping angels to their own will? We also found out that the division use every species, every planet, every moment. That's really cool. Maybe we'll be seeing a massive monster mashup. Belle also mentioned that her and Vida were going to have a honeymoon opposite the Academy. Gallifrey's Academy, maybe? I mean, those are some theories I have. I'll probably expand on those in videos during the week. But overall, this episode's easily a 5 out of 5 Sills of Rassilon for me. It's probably my favourite episode of Flux so far. It was so good. And those are my thoughts. Leave yours down in the comment section below. Remember, I've been Sideman Elf. Please like and subscribe. Hopefully we can get to 600 subscribers by the end of the year. That would be great. Oh, and yeah. Next time trailer for Survivors of the Flux. Kate Stewart's back, people. We've won!